I think your title uh, really, I think, fits. I think you've captured really the essence uh, of the city. It's that, it's that kind of city. After living here for a year, I think I finally get it, and I understand the essence of the city that people are talking about. My name is Alessia Proietti, and I don't really know how to introduce myself because I'm never on this side of the camera. <laughs> so I'm from originally Montreal, Quebec, a pretty large city far away from Red Deer, Alberta, uh, where I moved last fall to start my career as a journalist. Other than the fact that I had a friend here, I knew literally nothing about Red Deer, like legit nothing. Um, and some of the things I did hear weren't exactly the most flattering. Funny thing I heard of was like the rest stop capital. Uh, oh, yes. I thought that was funny. Do you mind describing that a little bit more, where you heard that or? Well, you know, again, and I'll use the word puzzling again, you know, or maybe frustrating is actually a better word, you know, to use it in that context, you know. So it's a three hour drive between Calgary and Edmonton. A lot of them had never heard of Red Deer, Alberta. Exactly. Right, you know? Or they, oh, that's that little place between Edmonton and Calgary, <laughs> right, you know? And that might be a factor too, sort of being the between that we're, we're neither one nor the other, we're ourselves. And so typically, uh, people would say, oh, Red Deer, Red Deer can, Red Deer, yeah. Yeah, we, we stopped there. You know, the kids, the kids wanted to use the washroom. And so I'd say, well, you stopped here. Well, did you see anything? Uh, mighty fine washrooms. But I think we've overcome that now, I, I think. Yeah, it, it, it's just the perfect compromise. You got two bigger centers, you know, just 150 kilometers down the road. You know, it's, it's, you got your city piece, but you have your rural values. You have your, you know, um, your amenities are here. So Red Deer is a people city. Uh, and, it, and it's the people really who have, what I would say, the, the essence of the beating heart of Red Deer, you know. People really make all the difference in everything, whether it's uh, a job, a relationship, a friendship, and really in the community makeup. So I'm from Montreal, Quebec, a city of 1.7 million people, and I love my city. I love the architecture, the culture, the food, the art. Uh, but the one thing that I never really got from the city was a sense of community. It's something that you see on TV where the families are talking to each other and the neighbors are helping each other. And I thought, you know, is that just a city thing or is that a Montreal thing? People in that area weren't as inclined to, you know, be helpful to their neighbor. So only when I visited other parts of Canada, whether east or west, uh, people actually smiled to each other on the street, or they said hello, and for me, that was really foreign at first and kind of shocking. It took a while to get used to it because in the city, you're seen as kind of weird if you say hello or like you want something. In the summer of 2021, I moved to Lake Louise, uh, which was a vastly different area than what I was used to. Um, it was an extremely isolated community, just a thousand people and maybe even less because it was in the pandemic at this time. I started working there as a front desk agent at a hotel um, and it was a great experience. Like I made a lot of friends, I got to learn a lot and be in a place that people you know, travel the whole world to go see. Um, but the one thing I noticed about people that were there is that we were all there to pave our way. I was there to get established in the province and other people were there for vastly different reasons. So it was a very transient kind of population, uh, therefore making it pretty difficult to form a tight-knit community. So about four months later, I moved to Red Deer and uh, I noticed once again, you know, city of 100,000 people now, it was another different ball game than what I was used to. So at the time, you know, I just had two luggages in hand. I was renting my friend's couch, which was like a new low. Um, and what I thought was a culture shock almost was how every single person that I interacted with was willing and eager to help me out. And what was really cool is that in my work as a journalist, I was writing an extremely high amount of stories about people in the community that were creating charity events and fundraisers and volunteer efforts. And I thought that that was just really cool to see. It's something that I had never seen before. 
So because of this, I really wanted to understand why red deer was like this. And so we went all the way back to the beginning to take a look at the history of why red deer has this culture of volunteerism. My name is Michael Dahl. I'm a historian. Well, my family has been here for over a hundred years on both my mother and my father's side of the family. I'm fifth generation Red Deerian. People say, well, where are you from? I just say I'm from Red Deer. You said that this room was very special to you. Why was it? Well, this is where I worked for, yeah. uh, I guess, 38 years. I was the um, Red Deer's first archivist historian, and uh, uh, when I started the archives, it was basically this room. And uh, this is the collection group. Uh, now the archives isn't here anymore, it's moved over to a new site because it outgrew the space that's here and the museum has taken over. How would you describe Red Deer in your own words? Well, it's a very uh, vibrant community with a very high level of volunteerism. We have a real name for that and uh, you know that helps build a real sense of community when you're able to have that. And when you think back throughout all these years, what are some names that stick out to you as big contributors into the Red Deer community? Some that I think of that have had some recognition is you know, we have Taylor Drive uh, and Taylor Bridge. That's named after Dr. Ethel Taylor. She was the first woman elected to uh, Red Deer City Council in 1961, but she was a phenomenal volunteer. She really exemplified service to others, but not looking for much from herself other than the satisfaction of helping other people. And uh, to the extent that we literally named one of our major roadways in Red Deer after her. It's, it's, it's been one of the mainstays of the community, maybe because our roots were as a relatively small town and as we grew, we didn't lose that small town um, commitment to your neighbors and friends and family. You know, a city can be cold and a city can be impersonal when it broadcasts itself as a city beyond its own people. But I came to Red Deer in 1996 and I had traveled uh, quite a bit with my employer in those days. And so over a very short period of time, uh, I came to see Red Deer as really a, a people city. It's not a building city. It's not a city, you know, not necessarily a city because it has taller infrastructure or big arenas or whatever the case may be. So Red Deer is a people city. Uh, and, it, and it's the people really who have, what I would say, the, the essence of the beating heart of Red Deer, you know. We have a tremendous location in Alberta and all those things, and we have the beautiful Red Deer River running through it. And all those things are gorgeous and wonderful. They're fantastic. However, they pale uh, when you look at the spirit and the heart of its people. People that look after each other, people that support each other, people that have a can-do attitude. Uh, and I, I know I promised I'd only take a few words, so I think I've, I think I've blown that promise. But I just want to let you know that in, in this city, it's, it's people that matter. They matter. I've had a couple of traumatic events in my life since coming to Red Deer. They've been uh, character shaping in many ways. Um, one was a major house fire in uh, 2003. This was Boxing Day, this is the day after uh, Christmas Day, you know. And uh, just an accidental fire. We had to leave our home for five months. We, you know, we didn't lose the home, it didn't burn to the ground, but everything was stripped out from the inside. We lost everything. In those five months, uh, the community, you know, my friends and strangers, you know, we, we took a rental up in West Park. And the people up in West Park said, wow, this is a family, you know, that's, that's had their backsides kicked and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. People will start sending over clothes and they'll start sending over food and they'll, you know, and, and all those things. And uh, it, it, was, it, was just, it was just touching. And I was not mayor in those days. And I was not a counselor in those days. I was just a working person in those days. And so the community reached out then and just really, it was just a, 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 an amazing outreach. 
I could give you a, a, a dozen examples um, of the quiet heroes that we have across our city, you know, um, that just continue to build community in a, in a quiet way. You're going to you're going to encounter some of them in, in, in your journey and over your years that, that, that I hope you'll spend in Red Deer, uh, you're going to encounter a lot more. This, this city is full of heroes uh, everywhere. When I went out into the community and asked them, you know, who's a major contributor in the community or one of those quiet heroes, almost everyone said one person. And this woman is, I mean, emblematic to the culture of volunteerism in the community. She was serving as the board chair and is basically one of the major reasons why the 2019 Canada Winter Games even came to Red Deer. In the uh, 2019 games, it was unbelievable. The vibe of the city was just, it was probably the coldest temperatures that we've ever had to host games, but everybody was so excited that you felt the heat and the passion that they had. My name is Lynn Radford and I am a resident of Red Deer, Alberta. I always have had that, you know, have to help your neighbor kind of spirit um, that I think we were raised that way. But once um, we, as um, my husband and I, moved to Red Deer with our young, very young family at that time, uh, thought that we should get involved and we should help out. And so you start with small increments and whether it's a sports team you were helping out or, or a local club that you were part of, you do that. And eventually you start to see that there are um, issues in the, in the community or issues in the club that could use some problem solving and then and, and that's probably where I started out. This woman was able to spearhead the creation of many buildings in the Red Deer City skyline. The Ronald McDonald House, the Paderni Centre Curling Club, Shell Fundraise for Westerner Park Event Centre and the Canada Games Celebration downtown alongside the Gary W. Harris Canada Games Centre at Red Deer Polytechnic. So I became um, part of the Red Deer College at that time, now Polytechnic Board of Directors. And while I was doing some work with them, and I was also on the Alberta Sport, Recreation, Parks and Wildlife Provincial Board, I recognized that in 2019, we were gonna host the games. Alberta was gonna have an opportunity to host the games, and I knew that Red Deer needed it. We were really struggling as a community to find a way to um, build new facilities. And between the needs for the Red Deer Polytechnic and the college, they couldn't get a dedicated sports facility. And when you marry that with the fact that we would need some facilities for the games, I brought the two groups together and I said, you know, let's, let's work on this. Well, speaking of bringing the people together, do you mind describing to me where we are right now? Wow, geez, this is great. This is, we're in the Gary W. Harris Canada Games Center. We're very fortunate. Um, for the games, once again, we raised a phenomenal, most money ever raised in a games in, 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 since 1967. In 50 some years, it was the most money ever raised in a games. But, but just as important was all the time. We never had any problem getting the volunteers. We were one of the few the communities that has been able to fulfill the quota for, for volunteers. And, and, and it was cold that week. And um, I think people actually recognized how important it was. And, um, and then they recognized that if we do this, we get facilities like this one. We get the facilities down at Great Chief Park and they redid the whole facility there for the speed skating, outdoor speed skating and the football turf and that. We got extra facilities out at River Bend. We got the new arena. You know, and when you go on, you get all of those facilities. Those are the physical things. And then the other thing we needed to do is we needed to elevate our volunteers. We needed to give them a bigger experience so they could go and make bigger and better experiences within whatever groups that they're part of. Yeah. And we needed to do that. And so we were very focused on also making sure that our volunteers had some wonderful learning experiences. Fun, but learning. Not one person does this, just like everybody should know that. And it, it takes a whole community to do this. And it takes, um, you know, it takes your municipality, it takes your corporate sponsors, it takes your volunteers, it takes your uh, administrations, all to come together and make things happen. And uh, I've been very fortunate to work with some dynamic people. But all of that just cemented, um, first of all, how important it was to have facilities for our children, and now it's how important it is to have facilities, programs, 
and that's for our grandchildren. Well, I, I think the greatest compliment, you know, that, that we can we can give to anybody is that they're planting trees that they'll never see the shade of, if you will. So in other words, it takes a great deal of vision, a great deal of, of, of self-sacrifice and service to start projects and to do things that you you, you essentially won't, won't benefit from. And we have so many of those community builders that have done that. Or what role does contribution play in everyone's maybe personal lives here in Red Deer? Well, it makes it a much more full life. Uh, you become more connected. You get to know the people in your neighborhood. You get to know people in other parts of the city. Uh, it gives you an outlet of doing something productive that uh, is quite rewarding personally as well as to the community that you're serving. And I think all of those things contribute to the uh, sense of well-being and just making for a much healthier community. This, this, this office, this desk, City Hall, it's just an avenue of service. It's actually no greater, I mean this, it's actually no greater then that soccer coach, then then that volunteer, then that then that person that's working at a at a food bank today that's filling hampers and and that kind of thing, it it it's just a, 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 an avenue of service. That that's uh, that's what it is. So that again, I'll just say, uh, is part of the magic uh, of uh, of Red Deer. You know. You really have to be almost living in Red Deer to fully understand it. It's like the most known yet unknown city in Alberta. I mean, everyone knows that Red Deer is here. It's in between Calgary and Edmonton. They pass through it daily, but nobody really knows anything about it. Um, and so that's kind of what I want to explore. What I noticed in this city is that people's reputations and popularity weren't based off of what they did for a job or what social class they were part of, but it was really based on what they did to contribute back into their community. Uh, that's why I really wanted to start this project and why I put a team together with local videographer Riley Surian and local journalist Sean McIntosh. Together, we really want to take the viewer with us on this journey to get to know the people of Red Deer and their currency of contribution. That's it, we're done. Okay guys, 